Hi, Dr. Garima here. Um, many congratulations to all those ADC candidates who could clear, be it your first term, second or third. I'm glad that you cleared because this was very important for you. But again, my heart goes out to all those candidates who could not clear, especially the first attempters. It's okay. Like, it was your first attempt. And it's not like you have miserably attempted or something. I know you have done the hard work. And this is one drawback of ADC which I don't like is they are not transparent as in they'll just give out the grades and they mark you on the percentile basis. So they don't give out your score, they don't let you know which questions you marked incorrect. So there's basically no way of knowing what mistakes you committed. Because then if you're going to give a second attempt, oh, how would you know that you know whatever you attempted was correct or not? But what can be done? So anyways, a lot of part one candidates who have cleared the exam have, are asking me how to approach for the part two. I'm myself preparing for part two. My exam is due in May. So uh, my first attempt is due in May. Okay, so I've been preparing since past three months now. Uh, I'll give you whatever I've understood so far for ADC part two till now. Okay. So there are two ways of going about it. The first way is good for all those people who have zero responsibility on their head. Meaning either they have just graduated and have zero clinical knowledge, zero patient knowledge. They can devote all the time because they don't have any job or they don't have their own clinic to manage. Either they are not married or they are married and have no young child and they don't have to manage their parents or whatever whatever they are literally free and they have money to spend or they are gathering money to spend whatever so these kind of candidates uh, should go for a full course you have to take a course okay to clear your part two and unfortunately all the courses are very very expensive like uh, because you ha they devote time on you and you also have to devote so much of things. Your, your expense only is going to be a lot for part two, only for one attempt. So these kinds of candidates should first book an exam date. For example, if you choose to book in December, then you should join a course somewhere in August or September. And uh, immediately after the course, keep on practicing at home for November and then go ahead and give your exam and hopefully you clear but not everybody can go through this approach because there are other candidates like me who are appearing for the exam after say 10 years of clinical practice and uh, we we have commitments like either we have our own clinic which we have to manage or we are doing a job or uh, we have a small kid at home and you have your own home like basically you're not living with your parents that you're out of the home and you don't have to manage your home so you have all those responsibilities and you're also the breadwinner of the family like many male candidates okay who are like the sole breadwinners of the family you you cannot expect them to leave and abandon everything and go for like two three months just to prepare for the exam and give. i mean if you can do that great but not everybody can do that i could not do that so for these type of candidates i would say take an exam after one year you have three years to give the exam so what will happen is uh, say like what i'm doing i feel that is the only way not that i've cleared my exam yet because i'm yet to appear in may if I do clear my exam in first attempt, not that I so much care about it right now because uh, I, I don't agree with the entire pattern of the exam only because it's not testing my skills, okay? Like I said, even a fresh graduate, if they prepare for three months, they can clear the exam because, and they have actually a better chance than clearing, you know, than me because I cannot devote three months just to prepare on that plastic tooth, you know, the technicals. So the fresh graduates are the best candidates to clear the exam. I'm telling this upfront because they can devote three months and their clinical knowledge is not going to be tested. So it's a scripted thing, everything. You just have to practice, 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 go perform. That's all. None of your experience or none of your skills are tested at all because whatever technical task that you're going to do in exam, never ever in your life you're going to do that on a patient. Nobody in the world does that. Trust me, when you will start uh, preparing for your, uh, for your endo task, 
nobody even the all the endodontists that i know big shot endodontists they all have said this is not how you do an rco like we have never done like this ever so if whatever you are going to practice you are not going to apply in your exam i mean in your life then it's easier for you because you have not gained any experience so you don't have to learn anything you just have to practice some dummy teeth and then go for us it was a difficult task because uh candidates like me we are so used to doing in a live patient because we know what needs to be done to get the correct thing uh unlearning that and doing something which i don't believe in was itself a struggle and eventually then the more i practiced i'm getting better at it i'm not saying i am exceptionally good in my technical tasks but i'm getting better at it i am i understand the criteria as now so for basically such kind of candidates like me how you have to approach the exam is you take the exam after one year like you clear your exam now you take it next year somewhere between jan feb march april may whatever and uh, you go and do a course for two weeks you know i i could do that because the mentor that i had agreed to teach me so in those two weeks i just learned the basics of the course like i i barely did any of the tasks 100% correctly like but i got a gist of it like how to do it because see there are many mentors who will give you an online course and which if you think you you can manage that great you know honestly i am a person who wants to see like it's like me telling you i'm giving you an uh, aeroplane flying manual okay i'm writing every steps but can you fly the aeroplane properly just by reading that no you need somebody to show you how to do it what to do it is written how to do it somebody needs to show you that somebody needs to correct the mistakes that you're making you won't know your mistake because you don't know what is correct and whatever you think is correct may not be correct you understand so initially i had opted for a full online course because i was like boy i'm not going to leave and <laughs> abandon my practice for four weeks and go and come back so one of the other candidates who unfortunately could not clear the exam because uh, she did some mistake in her skill dossier but the other two tasks she had passed she told me this is not the right way to go so you go you get a hang of how to do it on the plastic teeth okay so i went to her mentor who had taught her and he agreed to teach me for two weeks so i got the basic gist of it then i came back and uh, i'm practicing in my clinic since this january january feb march march is about to end april is there so i'm practicing in my own clinic now so the more i practiced the more better i think i am like in those two weeks i could not even perform one amalgam task properly i i, I became better in my crown cutting in those two weeks in the provisional crowns and the endo task and the composite but i was still sucking at amalgam only out here in my clinic today is my off day and i'm still here i just came to practice you know so uh, for candidates like me you should go for two weeks learn the gist of it actually two weeks is also more if you just go for eight to nine days that's enough like you don't have to spend 14 days you know you get the gist of it you come back you practice either at your home or in your clinic and if you are a working professional this tasks are exhausting okay so if you're working like 5 6 7 8 hours a day putting daily 2 plus hours more for the practice will be very very exhausting but because you have time in your hand uh, it's okay like 3 months you will prepare at home or in clinic then then you'll be confident enough to give the exam and when you will perform the tasks out by yourself and then you will click pictures and send it to your mentor they will further correct you this is just a technical part of it okay for oskis also you have to prepare simultaneously for oskis you should have a mentor who will guide you properly so uh, once or twice a week solving the oskis or if you have a study partner great so i am i'm solving my oskis with my mentor like once a week and uh, the other mentor whom i had taken the online course before before i knew about the second mentor uh he gave me all the oski notes so i have two oski notes now and uh, i'm reading that uh, my communication skills are fine so talking is not a problem but they don't just just talking they want to see what questions you ask 
and there are a lot of questions that you need to learn per se every case you know so practice is mandatory for oski the third is the skilled oski skilled oski is basically you have to perform four tasks in front of them as if the mannequin is a live patient like do extractions or you know patient is in sin cup or uh, you have to give i and b rubber dam scaling etc so that if you practice in your clinic they are separate mannequins of it okay you can't buy those mannequins they are very very expensive mannequins and just for one exam it is not advisable to buy but your mentor will have all of them so once only i had practiced in august last year and now before my exam i am going there to do my training again for 6 days uh and then i'll be doing a skilled oski course also there It, the skilled oski day one day cost is like Eight hundred dollars, my so expensive. Like more than exam, three times the cost is gone on my mentorship. Like taking people's this thing because see, I'm flying from Dubai to Australia, so I I don't want to take the risk of going there just one day before and giving the exam in case I have a jet lag or I need to get acclimatized to the climate. So I'm flying a week early, but at the same time I don't want to waste my time just sitting there. So I I approached another. mentor out there to let me practice i will carry my stuff none of the courses provide you anything you have to carry your own stuff and anyways you'll have your own stuff because you're practicing in your clinic so uh, i'll be carrying my stuff one suitcase will just be that <laughs> and uh, i'll be practicing there for 6 days and one day so the skill loss ki and the next day i'll be giving my exam see i understand people from uh, asian countries and other countries Where dentistry is not much paid, or you know, doing just dentistry is not enough to sustain your living. For these kind of people, uh, I understand it's a very important exam, and you are going to put all your hard-earned resources, asking money from your husband, from your parents, or whatever. And so, clearing the exam becomes a really, really important task for you. But for all those clinicians who are well settled in your practice, I would say don't break your head too much. Like. the exam stress actually took a toll on a lot of things on me like my health and the time i devote to my toddler son and the other things because there's so much to do and every task you know has to be marked perfectly and there is not basically enough time or energy left to practice that much and i just cannot abandon my clinical practice you know like it's a set base of past eight years in dubai by god's grace it's going good and when i asked honestly asked the australian dentist like those people who are doing a job not those who have a clinic of their own the earnings are pretty much the same you know like so it's so my idea of like giving it all like abandoning everything to just clear the exam i don't have that mentality okay many many candidates asked me if i would give them part two membership uh, mentorship for oskis i can for technical tasks i won't because i don't believe in those tasks like i don't believe i will ever be doing amalgam in any of my patients so why should i waste my time teaching somebody to do amalgam when even that person will not be doing amalgam for his rest of his life because it's just the adc criteria you know plus uh the adc exam whatever the candidates have told me so far who have cleared or not cleared in their many many attempts is that uh they don't tell you even if they fail you where you committed a mistake like i remember talking to this guy who said he really felt his endo was really nice in the exam but he flunked in endo and he was like i really don't know what happened so i was like if you don't know what happened and you think that you have per- uh, performed the task like exceptionally well even if you're going to give the next attempt you will do the same thing right but you would still want to know why you failed and it's not like it's so easy to just give the exam people staying in australia giving many attempts multiple attempts for them will be easy because they don't have the traveling cost the accommodation cost we just have the exam cost people outside australia it's difficult right my my flight ticket costed me 10000 dirhams my accommodation is costing me somewhere around 300 dollars plus 33 almost 1000 australian dollars okay so 
has like 3000 dirhams so 13000 dirhams out there straight like it's not a joke and for that duration of time i have to also leave my practice so my earnings out there is also less you know so you see plus the stress of the exam always in the mind because there are so many things that you have to take care of so this is my just one shot attempt i fail i fail i'm okay with that i'll get that experience because that was in my bucket list and i'll share my experience i pass great there's no plans of moving to australia at any point of time i'll just help you more if i pass then then if i pass it would be hope for a lot of candidates who are like me that okay this option two that i have explained go for two weeks practice for three months in your own clinic then go and give the exam so you are not like abandoning your responsibilities for a long long time but if i don't clear definitely then this option is not viable <laughs> at least for me or i don't know if it's viable for you great then you share your experience how it's been done then the option one only makes for sure like i know two of the people who are as experienced as me but they are following the one route the option one they both have gone to this institute in chandigarh stayed there for a month they left their practice they both have again like once exam is due on march and once exam is due on april end so both of them are traveling six weeks before in australia and uh, they are taking another coaching uh, spending so much and uh, they are going to stay there for another one month before they appear for your exam so all in all three months they are not practicing but both of them are single <laughs> not married and uh, they don't have much responsibilities at home and they are okay to leave their practice for three months because they are bent that now further we are going to practice only in australia which is good because that should be the mentality if you really 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 want to clear the exam you know no matter how many attempts so this is my takeaway for the exam so first book your exam date then book your course and buy the materials go ahead and practice i hope this helps so again many congratulations to all those candidates who have passed um i feel really great by the messages that you people have sent me like my morning today two hours i was just on the phone like replying to the messages feeling elated that many candidates have passed feeling sad that some of them couldn't but then there is what it is like you do your best you never know what the agency wants so have a nice day guys